what is my definition of love? Because I don't ask my question. I don't ask, I mean, maybe I do. My definition of love, it's the definition of love. Love is everything. It's a feeling that that is kind of hard to express. It's something that you just feel in your heart and in your inside that makes you be with someone, do something, um, create something, um, write something, um, paint something. Probably when you give your all to something. Butterflies represent a transformation of a human soul. I feel like every time that I'm doing a butterfly, I am actually transforming somebody's soul. You know how the butterfly comes from it comes from the dark into the into the light when they're like um, a gusanito, a caterpillar. The butterflies are free. They're delicate. They are made of all this little teeny teeny. You know, if you see closely a, a butterfly, you will find so many different like circles and lines and colors and, and 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 blends of colors and and it's just beautiful. I love it. Art is anything, you know, anything that you can make beautiful. Art is music, art is drawing, sculpting. Art is letting your silence speak. I'm letting my silence speak. And I think that applies to music. When you sit down and you start writing, you're letting your silence speak. And I actually had an art show that was called Silence Inspires You. It's in, in Spanish, it's called El Silencio Inspira. And I, because I find myself very quiet a lot of times. And painting, you know, like I could have music, but then I'm in a zone and then I forget that there was music on or the TV was, everything is quiet. And I feel like that's what art is, letting your silence speak. When people look at my art pieces, I want them to feel happiness, to feel motivated, to, to feel like they want to do something, passion, you know, I want passion to go through their system, to go do something. Because for me, um, when I started doing art, it was about, my product was right there, boom. Immediately, you know, I, it was an art piece. It wasn't a long process, it was just a process of doing something. And I want people to get that, you know, that they can do anything that they want. Okay, okay. I, I'm not the hair makeup stylist, but I just want to make sure you're yeah. comfortable, that you look the way yeah. you want to look. Yeah, you look you know, fine. Okay? Yeah. yeah, it's actually, fine. everything's recording if right now. If there's a bug here, I make sure it's okay. off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> everything's actually recording now, but don't worry about it. I have plenty of space on here, so uh, do you, you probably don't need to see what you look like, but you can probably see something like that. Okay, um, great. But I'll be taking some of these anyway. All right. So I'm going to be quiet. Yeah. And... You can go ahead and um, oh, got it. ask the first All right, so question. The first, I first want you to look at the camera, and then I want you to say, Hi, my name is Marissa Bell, and I have loved and lost. Okay. Hi, my name is Marissa Bell, and I have loved and lost. Okay, now um, I'm going to ask you a series of questions, okay? Um, how did you meet your first love? And how long were you together? I met my first love... This is gonna be tricky because I think my first love was my dad, and um, I was together and we were together until he passed away. It's kind of like different, maybe, for what somebody else might answer. Um, but I think for every girl, our first love is our our father. And uh, what were some of the best experiences you had with this person? My first experiences that I had with my dad was just like really growing up and watching him work and how um, he was very determined and driven with his work. He was a politician, so he was very passionate about his, his country and the city of Cologne where he was born, so um, that's really 
What was the question again? Uh, <laughs> the best experiences you've had with the person. Yeah, well, my best experiences with, you know, really growing up with him and watching him being um, so driven and so passionate about his country. I've never seen somebody so passionate about, you know, making his country glow and, 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 and making amazing things for his country. So those are the experiences that I remember about him, you know, when he, you know, he, when he ran for vice president of the country, um, when he, when we moved to Washington, when he was an ambassador, um, there were amazing experiences because we got to meet a lot of important people and that's something that I will never forget. Is there anybody else in your life that you were completely in love with? Aside of my dad? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, of course. And yeah. how old were you? First time? First my first love. my first love, 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 like relationship. Yeah. Um twenty-three. Okay. And what was it like? It was beautiful because um I fell in love with somebody that um that didn't live in the same place. So I got to um live love in a di in the distance and you know understand what you know how love can grow from the distance and I think that was amazing because a lot of people say that it's I'm gonna say it in Spanish amor de lejos amor de pendejos it's like um, like loving from far away is like stupid love but I find it very different because I think if you really love someone it doesn't matter the distance you're always going to be together and I think also that's that will bring you guys together if it's real love if it's not real love then maybe you know maybe I guess people are right but in my experience I think the distance makes uh, makes you love you know people more I experienced that with my family, I experienced experience that with my best friends because um, I don't live with them, I live far away from them and I've lived far away from, their, from them for a long time so I think our love just gets tighter, you know? That's great. Um, so when did you realize that uh, love became a bit painful? When, well, I think love becomes a, a real, uh, a little bit painful when, probably when you feel like, a, like you're losing that person or when you think you're not in the same track, um, you start experiencing some pain because you obviously you want that person to be in the same track with you and you, you obviously want to, you know, you make plans, I, I think, or at that moment. You know, I just think that when you're in love with somebody, just everything is just so colorful and beautiful, and you're so um, in my in my in my experience. You know, I just I get very passionate and very you know um, it drives me. It makes me feel butterflies inside of my stomach. It makes me feel something beautiful, and um, I think it becomes painful when you don't get from that other person, you know, the same thing. And you feel like you're losing them, so... Yeah, that's very good. Um, so, you know, at what point in your life did you feel like you were con losing control because of a falling out or anything? And how was that experience like for you at that time? Probably... Uh, Probably, you know, I felt like I was losing control. Um, probably in that moment, I wasn't in control, you know? Like, um, probably I gave my control to somebody else. Because sometimes we tend to do that. We tend to think that, you know, that, you know, we, we want to give our all to somebody that we love. And that's when we start to lose control, you know? When we start giving them, instead of, like, really, you know, giving yourself a lot of love and and putting that because the first person that you need to love is you 
and then you you know that love reflects to the other person I think when you start just doing everything for somebody else is when you start losing and you start losing control and probably in my first experiences of love I experienced that and I still maybe now um, but I'm learning and you know I think love is always a learning experience every all the time it's very different so very good and um, what was the the worst moments of letting go this is all the hard stuff I swear we're gonna get to <laughs> I'm gonna cry <laughs> um, what were the m worst moments of letting go and is it just limited to your um, you know relationships with your boyfriend or is there does it go beyond that so I guess I'm asking two questions the first question is what was it like like the actual emotion the physical nature of yourself during your worst moments of letting go I feel like when when you wait how do I how do I answer that with the complete <laughs> sentence uh, yeah. the worst parts okay um, yeah I lost myself yeah uh, when at my darkest moments of love loss, this is how I felt. Okay, at my darkest moment, moments of love and lost, what you what what I experience is a real deep pain inside of me. All right, real quick, can you start that over with the at my darkest moments of love and love lost? At my darkest moments of love and love lost, um, I experience like there's like a like a like a deep in my experience it's like I get a stomach ache I feel like I'm unable like my body just it's unable to do things you know I can't I just it's just hard it's just because you're broken inside in so many little pieces that you know it's so hard to wake up it's so hard to work it's so hard to you know for me for other people, some people, that's the drive to do something. For me, um, I get sad because I really put, you know, I put a lot of, I put my everything when I, when I, when I love and when I'm in a relationship, I give my all. And when there's like, you know, when I have to let go, it's just, it's just hard. It's just yeah. painful. And how long did it take you to recover? the first time a long time for me it takes a long time I'm the per I'm that kind of per for me it take for it takes me to recover you know it depends on the relationship but you know probably probably I'll take more than a year because um, my relationships are you know I put time in my relationships and I put you know, it's not, I don't have relationships that I don't bump it from one relationship to another. I'm not that kind of girl. You know, I am with it when I'm with somebody that I love. You know, it's for a couple of years, and um, to recover from that, it takes probably the same amount of time that I spend with that relationship, because you grow apart and you have to start all over again. You know. Because at the beginning it was two, and now it's just one, and then you, and now you have to, you know, transform all of that into something amazing. And you go through so many phases. You go through being pissed off, th to going to just crying and being depressed, and then pissed off, and then loving, and then understanding, and then growing from that relationship, and then you know. So it takes time. It, I, and in my opinion, I think. People should just really, from one relationship to another, take time to grow because when you bump from one relationship to another, when you're just, you know, saying, when you're just like, um, I'll just forget this one with another one, you don't really take the time to see what, you, what are the issues that you need to work on. And for me, I like to work on my issues and I like to grow and that's my case. And what helped you along the way of that process? What were some activities or people that came along your way that made you rediscover yourself and let go? Um, okay, so how do I... So I would say, um, so what helped me along the way of letting to, go? 
Okay. What helped me along the way of letting go was, first of all, my spiritual practice. I always go, um, I always look for support there. Um, my friends, um, I live far away from my family, so my friends are my family, and I have amazing friends. Before you ask the next one, what yeah. are you? No, before I cry. Oh. <laughs> you want the moment. You're, <laughs> I was uh, like, I'm getting that moment. Where are you at? <laughs> at the friends. At the friends. Like, where's Um, now? Um, right here, branches. Branches? branches. Right, yeah. Before your next question, 